someone who's worked in the field, whether it's in Estonia, Kazakhstan, the Ukraine, uh, or, or some other country, I've always noticed that it's, one needs to have both that research knowledge and lots of practical knowledge about how to lead and manage a program. And that is what this book tries to do. It tries to be a hybrid product uh, offering both of those things. Yeah, I would reinforce what Peter's saying is that, that there's a gap in the literature, a, a gap in discussions about bilingual programs. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research, there's a lot of books on student outcomes, uh, different models of bilingual education, and how effective they are relative to one another and relative to monolingual programs. There's even a lot of uh, written on effective pedagogy in bilingual programs, although we need more, but there's still quite a bit. But what is missing is how to actually create a program, how to implement the program, how to make sure that the program fits in with other things that are going on in the school, with activities within the community, how it meshes with political forces in the community, how you can secure funding. And that was a serious gap in, in the literature, in my opinion. So, and, th and, this and how to keep programs alive. Because even if you're running a very good program, and it doesn't mean that that program is absolutely secure uh, for, uh, uh, in the future. So one has to constantly be focused on how to ensure that the program remains strong. The program, it, my experience is that programs are often set up and implemented very, very quickly and with very short-term goals in mind. What's going to happen within a year, within two years perhaps? But these programs are fragile and unless people have a long-term vision about how to secure them, how to secure funding, how to make sure professional development is provided on a timely basis over time, then they become unstable. And this book uh, addresses those issues in a very comprehensive way. And one of uh, the book also includes several tools uh, that help uh, people to plan for these programs and in very succinct ways tries to bring out what the component parts of this bilingual vision would be, how one gets to where, uh, to the point where one has a sustainable, uh, effective, uh, long-term program that is supported by stakeholders. Planning it is, in some senses, at the, is at the heart of this book because through the case studies that are included in the book, it identifies issues that uh, program developers need to think about in advance so that they can plan how to get the teachers in the classroom in a condition where they can teach effectively, how to ensure that there are good textbooks available for students, how to make sure that there are uh, support systems in the community, politicians on their side, business people on their side, parents on their side, and all of that takes planning. In many programs, people don't think about these things and so they don't plan for them. And the book really uh, uh, puts all those issues on the table and says think about these when you're starting a program. And it does this not only in a broad brush strokes sort of manner in the sense of saying it's important to think about developing learning materials or it's important to work with your stakeholders, but it actually goes into some detail about what each uh, uh, what some of the major steps are that one would need to take if one is developing learning materials or if one is uh, trying to work with stakeholders. The devil is in the details, as they say in English and many other languages. And I think one of the things that the book does do is it helps people to focus both on the kind of macro level and the micro level, uh, both on those big issues that one needs to be thinking about, but then provides some very important detail about how to ensure that one achieves some of these broader base goals. Well, a very useful uh, framework is provided in this book which uh, brings together all of these ideas that we're talking about. So it identifies uh, uh, various uh, forces that can influence a program, either in the beginning, in the middle, or as it's fully developed. It, uh, it identifies mechanisms that uh, are important to consider putting into place in order to manage the program effectively. So uh, although there are a lot of details presented in the text, in the, uh, it, they're actually made coherent through this framework that Peter presents.
uh, the, uh, the framework is one of forces, mechanisms, and counterweights. And uh, a force, uh, forces are often under-attended to in bilingual programs. Uh, people very often concentrate on the mechanisms. Let's get the curriculum in place, the learning materials in place, let's hire the teachers, ensure that the classrooms have been properly set up, and so forth. But in fact, forces the, are in uh, the intangible things that, that bring life to mechanisms. So forces are, in a sense, generative, productive. They lead to something happening, because a mechanism in and of itself is completely inert. Uh, we can develop a curriculum. Uh, it doesn't mean anyone's going to be implementing it. We can develop learning materials. It doesn't mean that the teachers are going to be using them or using them in the way that the authors intended for them to be used. So it's important to think about these intangible things, such as a belief in the value of bilingual education or the status accorded to one language or another language. Uh, it, people are really quite surprised uh, when, they, when they, in their own school, begin to analyze and evaluate the status accorded to each language. Uh, it, uh, other things, such as stakeholder inclusion or open access to information, these are key principles that are important if a program is going to be successful. And these are discussed in, in depth in the book. One of the other issues that somebody has faced when one is trying to manage or lead these programs is how much attention to uh, how much attention should one accord to any given force or any given mechanism. And it's quite easy sometimes to overattend to one force or overattend to a, a mechanism. And what can happen is that if one overattends to a certain mechanism, that can have a negative effect uh, somewhere else in the system, in the sense that you cannot uh, create or destroy energy, one simply moves things around. Uh, so that if one is putting too much attention, as we know, for instance, on final examinations, then uh, the final examinations begin to have an incredible effect on what happens in the classroom, uh, on what is taught, what is valued, and so forth. So one of the things the book helps people to do is think through the consequences of uh, some of the forces and mechanisms discussed in the book and, and helps one to plan for them to ensure that uh, there aren't unexpected, uh, unwished for, in a sense, consequences. Uh, bilingual programs uh, need to be thought of as dynamic systems that, uh, that need constant attention. And uh, the third part of this uh, framework uh, is the notion of counterweights. Uh, for instance, in a bilingual program, if uh, one is coming into a community, setting up the program, and the program begins to displace other teachers, well, that is going to cause quite a problem. Uh, people may begin to, uh, who are under threat of losing their job, are going to probably work against the program. So one needs to have a counterweight in place to ensure that those teachers are somehow or other engaged, uh, that, that there aren't negative consequences for those people. Uh, and over time, the uh, issues that uh, might destabilize a program or impact a program in some negative way can change. So that what you've set up in the beginning for the first two or three or four years may be working very effectively. But as the program stabilizes, other factors may start to arise that can create problems. But if you're not attending to them, you can be caught short. So often what can happen in these programs is you have short-term political support, but after a number of years, you, people are voted into office who, who are no longer so supportive of the program. And unless you're paying attention to those forces and setting up counterweights to try to counteract the effects of, of those forces, you can find yourself in a very precarious position, even five, six, seven, ten years after the program has been in place. Mm -hmm. Even very successful programs can find themselves in a very difficult position. So this notion of counterweights uh, is there to help people think through the consequences of the various uh, forces that they might be attending to or the various mechanisms that they're developing. Mm -hmm.